What is going on my Welch family? And welcome back. Today's lesson is gonna be how to weld socket flanges from a stainless flange to a carbon flange. Different sizes and different ways you can weld them as well. I know I'm ready to burn. Are you? Let's get to it. Alrighty guys, right now I'm gonna tack it. And the, the flange that I have is a 150 pound flange for three inch schedule 40 stainless steel pipe, which is the pipe that I'm tacking on, okay? I'm gonna tack it in four corners, but before, Got to make sure it's level, you know, basic fitting for anything and um, make sure it's square as well. I feel like it's square. I'll go ahead and tack the other side. Usually in you know, the socket flanges, uh, they have spacer rings in the inside. So that's what we put in there. Some spacer rings. All right, tack the other side, making sure it's leveled. Right there on the other side as well. Had a hammer a little bit, it kind of pulled. So check it again. Looks good. Go ahead and tack it. Now I'm not adding no metal except for right now. The first two, I didn't add none. Uh, just washed it, but this one I'm gonna add some, just a little bit. Give a little bit more strength in there. And right there, it seems pretty good. I like it. Let's go ahead and tack it up. Add some metal right there. Now your tack should only be about maybe a half inch tack, maybe less, about an eighth, just something to hold, guys. All right, now here I'm gonna show you how to walk these flanges. Now, it's not more walking, guys, it's, it's more wiggling the cup. I'm wiggling the cup, especially for the root pass. We're throwing two passes on these flanges, okay? We're throwing a root and we're throwing a hot, and that's it. For the root, I do very little uh, wiggling, very little wiggling, okay? but make them tight as possible for the wiggles. The rod that I'm using is a 308 rod, of course, because it is a 304 pipe, but the pipe that, I mean, it is a 304 flange, but the pipe that I'm using is a 308. So I'm just wiggling inside, keeping that rod right in the middle where that gap is at and just going with it, okay? I'm not pushing no rod in, I'm just laying it on there and going to town, okay? Also, I got, uh, is it, we, didn't, we didn't have a rotator, so what we did was um, we just played with it, guys. Right now, in the field, of course, or in the, in the shop, you usually do have a rotator, I mean, a, a, a positioner, but, you know, um, sometimes you can have to do it all the way around, but the reason why we're doing it rolling like this, because I want you all to see the arc shots to make sure that I see a good quality weld all the way around, okay? But usually if it was just me doing it by myself and not have the, the person rolling it for me, okay? I would walk it all the way around. But the shots that we have to get in there, we gotta make sure that we, you can see every detail that we're doing. So this is why we're doing that, okay? But it's awesome though, it really is. Just, just him doing that, man, bring me back to the shop days. So just wanna wiggle away, guys, wiggle away. Keep that wrist light, pop right off, we stopped, repositioned. And still going to town with it, okay? I'm making it nice and tight, nice and tight walks. Right now I'm using a number 10 cup, okay? If you feel like a number 10 cup is too big, that you can't really wiggle as much, then use a number eight, you know, just to get that root pass in there real as well. Right now, I went over the tack, warmed it up, and then I kept going. Just wiggling away, guys, wiggling away. You do not want to throw the root pass like if it's a hot pass, guys, okay? You want it to fuse inside that gap area, okay? That's why the spacer ring is there for. Okay. Right here, and I'm about to tie in. I take the rod out, let it fuse, let it fuse, and then pop off. All right, guys, now we're starting the hot pass. I just did my root pass, okay? And by the way, I did my root at 160 amps. It can be up to 150, 160 amps. And now I'm doing the hot pass at 165 
270 amps, okay? Whatever y'all prefer. But I like to run a little bit hotter, but you'll want to run too hot because you want to add some color, uh, have some color on there, okay? And right, now I'm just walking away. Now I'm walking the cup, guys. I'm not wiggling it no more. Just walking it. Leaving my rod on top of the puddle, okay? Because if I leave it in the bottom, the whole, the whole, uh, the whole weave and the whole puddle is going to favor that bottom side. I want it to favor both sides, so I have it on the top side, okay? Just walking away, guys. Take your time. Pause on the bottom, pause on top. All right. Always have a sharp tungsten in as well, guys. You know, if you feel like you hit that tungsten one time, resharpen it. The more sharper it is, the more the, the, the prettier the weld is going to come out, especially with the weaves. It melts better. You can control the puddle better. You know, it's good to have a sharp tungsten at all times. Right now, I'm just telling him, you know, spin, don't spin, spin, don't spin. Just flowing with it, guys. You just got to flow. Do not keep that wrist tense at all. You keep that wrist tense, you're going to slip every single time. All right? Just keep it light and walk away. But like I said, if it was... Uh, if it was me, I would have walked it all the way around with nobody throwing it. Nobody rolling it or nobody turning it or nothing. I would have done it all the way around. But like I said, I'm just trying to do this for y'all so y'all can see the arc shot. So y'all can see how I walk it, okay? Remember, I'm running at 175 amps for this, for the hot pass. And that's the only pass I'm going to throw on there. Now, depends on your socket flange that you're going to have, okay? Sometimes they run bigger, so you're going to have to throw a hot pass and maybe two two fills after that, one on the bottom, one on top to have it stacked. But right now we just did a root and hot, okay? This is showing you how I walk it, how to weld it. You always wanna throw a root on everything that you do, always. All right, right here, I'm about to tie in to the spot, a finished spot up. I finished spot right here. And that's it, guys, for the stainless. All righty, guys, so there you have it. That's the stainless part of it, how I welded it out. Nice and tight weaves. I think it came out pretty consistent, so um, definitely not perfect, guys, like I say, but um, I, I can do the job. Now I'm going on to the carbon flange, okay? And for the root pass here, I'm running at 100 and 165 for the root. Having a sharp tungsten. I'm using a 309 uh, stainless steel carbon rod so I can give you all some color. Usually you're going to run it with some ER70S2. Okay. Um, filler rods. But like I said, I just want to show you all and give you all a good quality weld. And that's all. Still going to town with it, wiggling it now. Nice and tight wiggles, guys, okay? Don't over exceed, trying to go too wide on that root pass. Just keep that rod in the middle. Let it fuse inside that gap. Watch it fuse it. Watch it fuse, okay? If you keep that wrist light, the wiggling becomes way more easier for y'all. It wiggle, it will literally wiggle on its own. If you feel like your if your wrist is tense, then then you're gonna slip a lot. Like I said with the stainless one, you're gonna slip a lot, and it's happened to me a lot of times, guys. And if you slip, you're gonna leave arc marks all on the flange, all on the pipe, and you don't want that. So just keep that wrist light, guys. Don't keep it too light, like a feather. Of course not, but keep it light enough. So you can control it. You're going to have some type of tension in there. That's, that's obvious, but you got to have to have a little bit, have it light for sure. Tight into the tack. 
and it popped off right here, rotated it, and kept going, okay? Like I said, usually in the fields, guys, it's, it's mostly on a jack stand or it can be on a tripod if you're gonna be doing this. If you're in the shop, usually it's in a roller. If it's not on the roller or in the positioner, then it's on a tripod, you know? So, um, or if not, then it's on a spool piece, you know? So it's things like that. Usually you're gonna do it in position, on a fixed position, or you're gonna do it on a roller, either of those two. So it's good to know both. So that's why I had uh, uh, my boy spin it around for the stainless flange, so y'all can see how it is with the positioner. It's way more easier, way more easier with the roller for sure. And definitely a little bit, little bit more difficult when you're just doing it in fixed position. But, you know, if you know how to weld, guys, and, and once you get comfortable, everything becomes more easy. There you go, getting that nice gold color. Now I'm just wiggling away, guys. I already got the pipe hot. I got the flange hot already. So now it's starting to melt out just the way I want it to. Y'all know the difference between walking the cup and wiggling the cup. This is definitely wiggling the cup, okay, guys? Don't try to walk the cup on a root pass. Do not, it's not gonna work out fine, guys. This right here is wiggling. When you wiggle, you know, you can hit that tungsten side to side, making sure it's hitting both walls and go to town, you know? It makes it much easier. Even on the hot pass, when I'm about to show you after this route, I'm still wiggling the cup, okay? For the stainless one, I walked it, you know, because it was it was a smaller, smaller pipe, smaller flange, so it filled up quicker, so I had a more of a flat area for me to walk. But since this is, this is a, a bigger one, okay, bigger flange, then I went to town with it. There's the root. Nice gold color, popped off. Now we're starting the hot pass, okay? The hot pass is running about 175, 180. I've seen guys run at 200, 205. I mean, it, I can run at the same heat as well, guys, but I just want to give you a good quality weld, all right? The carbon pipe is a six inch schedule 40 socket weld flange. And it's also 150 pound for six inch schedule 40 pipe. going to town guys okay it's the same thing all the way around even for with the stainless uh flange that we're doing now with the carbon flange the same movement okay walking it all the way rather it be a small pipe whether it be a big uh pipe a small flange or a big flange you're going to do the same thing the same method wiggle the cup on the root walk the, uh wiggle the cup on the the hot pass if you have enough room to wiggle it now if it's flush enough the smaller the pipe the smaller the, the flange is um, then you can start walking it, you know? But the bigger the flanges, the thicker the flanges, then that's when you're gonna start wiggling on the hot pass, okay? Y'all would definitely understand once y'all start welding it, you know? See right here on the hot pass, I'm wiggling it. I'm not walking it at all. Just wiggling it side to side. There is times you could walk it, guys. It's just whatever y'all prefer. Y'all prefer, but me, I'm just showing y'all what I do as far as socket flanges, okay? How I weld them out. And I really hope it helps all out, okay? Because, you know, y'all gonna get a lot of these in a shop or a pipe shop, fabrication shop, uh, in the field as well. You're gonna get some flanges if you're, um, if you're out there, you know? So make sure y'all know how to weld these out, guys, okay? Usually you're gonna have the fitter fit them up for you and the welder, you're just gonna weld it out. But also, sometimes you're gonna have to know how to uh, level out your flanges and see if it's level to see if, if the weld didn't pull anything, you know? So things like that are, are things you need to know when you get out there to uh, the shop or in the field. Make sure you don't pull any welds. So I might do a, vi a video on that as well as far as pulling pipe, you know? Throwing too much heat on one side, how to weld it in quarters so you won't pull anything, you know? And I'll definitely do that in another tutorial, but right now I'm just showing you how I weld socket flanges, okay? And this is the heat that I prefer, so I really hope it helps you all out. Um, 
And yeah, guys, just the same thing all the way around. And when you pop off on your last uh, tie-in, make sure to wiggle it out. Don't just pop it out, okay? You don't want to leave that fish eye right there. All right, guys, hope you enjoy this video. And keep on burning. All right, well, two family, there you have it. How to fit up and weld socket flanges. Now, uh, I gave you a glimpse of both. I gave you 309 and also some 308 stainless, okay? Hope it helps you out. Remember, burn, learn, and eventually, y'all gonna earn. Y'all have a good one.